winter weather brings to mind one thing snow, but there are actually several types of precipitation we see during this season. Meteorologist Nicholas Snyder is in now to explain. When you think about different types of precipitation during the winter time, you may only think of snow, but there's actually quite a few more types of precipitation that we can see, including freezing rain, sleet, and even rain. Now, rain, while you think it might not cause a whole lot of impacts, it actually causes very large impacts over our area, especially during the winter time, as it's probably one of the most common types of precipitation we see all year round. Now, rain starts as snow, believe it or not, high up in the atmosphere into cold air. But once it reaches warm air, it melts, falling as just liquid water, and really doesn't have the opportunity to refreeze as it reaches the ground. Flooding's the big impact that we do see with rain as winter storms track along the Ohio River. It pulls in some warm air, allowing that warm air to move on in and allowing the rain to fall. If you live along a river town, definitely a good idea to keep an eye to the sky once we have winter storms tracking along the Ohio River as the majority of the snow will fall to the west and to the north of us and the majority of the rain will fall right directly overhead, causing, again, flooding impacts during the winter time and the most not ideal thing to happen, of course, during a winter storm. So keep that in mind going forward into this winter. The next type of precipitation is freezing rain, where we start a snow once again in a layer of cold air, falling as rain in the middle levels of the atmosphere. But just before the Earth's surface, another layer of sub-freezing air allows the rain to freeze on contact to any surface near the Earth's surface. This causes a whole lot of problems and is probably one of the most dangerous types of precipitation you can see during the winter time. Some of the problems that we can see from this, of course, are power lines being disrupted by a heavy accumulation of freezing rain, trees coming down from this, and of course, roads becoming ice rinks as, again, the rain freezes on contact with the road. In fact, the image right here behind me illustrates the impacts that ice storms can have. Now, of course, for an ice storm to occur, you need at least a quarter inch of ice accumulating on any surface within 24 hours of the storm starting. And a good idea to, again, really pay attention to any winter weather alerts that are issued if an ice storm is possible. Of course, back in the year 2021, we had two ice storms in the span of a week in portions of Kentucky, and that caused a whole lot of problems for those into eastern Kentucky. So, again, be sure to stay alert for rapidly changing conditions, especially as ice storms do occur, as, again, power lines, trees can be down, as well as roadways becoming pretty much impassable as the ice accumulates to the road. Sleet's our next winter type of precipitation and is often mistaken for hail. A good way to uh, remember that sleet is sleet and hail is hail is one, sleet comes from winter storms while hail comes from thunderstorms typically seen during the spring and summertime. Another thing that can really be identified as sleet is if the ice is clear and very small compared to hail, which is typically white in color and very large, that is a way to identify sleet. Now with sleet, you start out as snow once again, very high up into the atmosphere. That snow melts as it goes through a layer of warmer air above the Earth's surface, but there's a much wider area of cold air compared to freezing rain just near the Earth's surface, which gives the rain enough time to refreeze as it falls, as opposed to on contact with the Earth's surface. This allows it to fall as clear ice pellets. This is typically one of the more rarer types of winter precipitation, but it certainly can cause some impacts out there. And now what you've all been waiting for, of course, snow, which is the most wintry type of precipitation out there, falling when the entire atmosphere is below freezing or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The optimal temperatures for creating large snowflakes would be the dendritic growth zone, which is a layer of air between negative 10 and negative 14 degrees Celsius. 
in the middle levels of the atmosphere. This causes larger snowflakes to occur and heavier snow accumulations to really occur as well. To get winter storm conditions, you need at least four inches of snow in a 24 hour span to see a winter storm warning across the area. Of course, that's over most of the WSAZ viewing area. If you're further to the east in some of those higher elevations, you need five inches within a 24 hour span. Overall, obviously, we've seen storms produce a whole lot more than that, including back in 2012 when Superstorm Sandy brought very heavy snow to portions of the area back as early as Halloween. Overall, it's important to remember when winter weather alerts are issued, be prepared for all different types of precipitation, especially that snow and freezing rain, where it's likely the most impactful types of precipitation you see during the winter, but also the flooding you can see from heavy rain.